A few months ago, I did a video ranking cringy celebrity couples, and one of the more common comments I got on that video was, where the hell is everybody else? I'm not gonna lie, I definitely missed out on a lot more people than I thought I had. So I ended up asking you guys over on my community tab which video you wanted to see first and to send me any couples you wanted to see specifically. And here we are. You might notice that this time around the tier list is a little bit different from the first video. I decided I want to mix it up a bit. The first tier is called Not Cringe, Just Strange. This is for the couples that you guys sent in that personally, I don't feel like they're cringe but they are just a bit strange, you know? Of course, the girl's tear is back. This is for any couple that I feel like, while they might be cringe and it involves famous people, it just doesn't have the cultural impact you would have expected. Much like this collaboration that nobody remembers. I decided we'd keep that couple in high school too. Basically, for giving this kind of energy, you're landing up here. I Have No Words, of course, is back. Pretty self-explanatory. And of course, the Angel Mommy 7 cosplay is back as the top tier. This tier is for the cringy couples that aren't just giving us cringe, they're giving camp, drama, performance. Before we get into it though, I want to give a quick shout out to Audible for sponsoring. They're the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, and they've got everything from bestsellers, new releases, to tons of different genres, and they now even host podcasts. I've really gotten into audiobooks in the past few years just because I realized if I'm multitasking reading while doing other things by just listening to it the same way that I would like a YouTube video or a podcast, I'm able to read way more than I used to. It's also really great for travel as well. I found it a lot easier to just load up a few audiobooks instead of trying to fit five books in my bag and worrying if it's going to be overweight or not. Audible's also recently launched Audible Plus, where with a membership, you can get full access to their Plus catalog, which has thousands of select originals, audiobooks, podcasts, and even ad-free versions of popular shows and exclusive series. And what's also really nice is that you can download or stream without any limit, because you can listen to everything offline too. I actually just started What We Do in the Dark by Michelle Hart. The story follows this character named Mallory, who's a college freshman, and she's dealing with her mother's recent death. She comes across this professor on campus. They end up having an affair with each other, but it's not just that Mallory's attracted to her, but also who she is when she's with her. So the story follows the affair as it's going on, but also the aftermath after it's ended and Mallory kind of coming to terms with what happened and how it affected her. I've heard great things from the people who've read it so far. If any of you guys have, definitely let me know what you thought. If that isn't your thing though, don't worry. Audible has thousands of different titles to choose from, so you're bound to find something you want to check out. So if you want to give it a try, you can visit audible.com slash kcionzo or text kcionzo to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. That's audible.com slash kcionzo or text kcionzo to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial with Audible. Thanks again to Audible for sponsoring. Definitely check it out if you're interested, but otherwise let's get back into the ranking. Elon and Grimes were sent in a ton, and I'm not gonna lie, I cannot believe I forgot about them when I was making the first video. Their entire relationship has been memed on, which I think is just a combination of how strange the pairing feels in general, and of course the fact that they named their baby after a serial number, which of course spawned a million different versions of the same joke, but I'm not gonna lie, they're kind of funny. But in my humble opinion, the true cringe in this relationship the pinnacle, if you will, is this exchange on Twitter. Pronouns suck. I love you, but please turn off your phone or give me a call. I cannot support hate. Please stop this. I know this isn't your heart. There is a certain je ne sais quoi about these tweets. They have phones and they could have texted it privately, but instead they invited us in. Unfortunately, they did unfollow each other during this spat because apparently they're both 13. So because of that, I kind of want to put them in the that couple in high school tier just because this whole situation is giving high school. Stop. I think the only couple that could rival Elon and Grimes in terms of like a messy public argument that unfortunately ends up being wildly hilarious would probably be Noah Cyrus and Lil Xan. Lil Xan broke up with Noah Cyrus over a nude Charlie Puth meme it sounds like an AI generated word salad, except for the fact that the sentence is 100% true. Allow me to walk you through the chaos of your memories a bit hazy, but how it all started was Lil Xan went onto his Instagram and posted that he might be getting cheated on. Noah responded with this collection of videos of her weeping to a camera. Breathing is super important for me. Thank you, Noah. Um, I think we all find breathing important, actually. But immediately after that whole kumbaya weepy montage, she slaps you with this screenshot. I'm heartbroken and confused. This is a meme I sent Diego that made him think I'm cheating on him. And the picture is a porn star's body with Charlie Puth's face edited onto it. Oh, and it's also followed by a text that says, Charlie Puth. These two were going through it though, like super publicly. They were calling each other cheaters, claiming that the relationship was fake to begin with. I'm gonna be honest, if there's anybody I feel for in this situation, it's Charlie Puth. Like it's one thing to be thrown in someone's breakup drama out of the blue, but in this specific way, what the fuck? It's just beyond me that this actually happened. It sounds like a Mad Lib. 
They definitely belong in the I Have No Words tier though. Demi and Max were also another couple that I completely forgot about until people sent them in. I think it has more to do with what happened after they broke up versus the relationship itself. Basically, Demi broke off their engagement and Max did not take it well and decided to let everybody on planet Earth know about it. Phase one was a little notes app moment on Instagram. I was on the set of my new movie, Southern Gospel. I see we're getting the last drop of promo out of the situation. Very tactical, with crew and cast members right next to me, who literally watched me open my phone, where I then opened a tabloid. I'm getting some braless wife brings me a sandwich energy here. This is the God's honest truth of how I found out about the ending of the engagement, and have people from my film who saw the whole thing go down and helped me get back into character to continue my job. I had cast and crew with families relying on me to do my job. Friendly reminder, by the way, uh, this guy is not like a firefighter or something. He's an actor, which now that I'm saying that, some of the dots are starting to connect. That being said, please end this narrative and focus on other, more important issues in the world. I love and forgive everyone involved. Let us be. Let us heal. God bless. Keep the last bit of that note in mind though, because he then proceeded to go to the beach where he had proposed in the first place and invited paparazzi to take photos of him there mourning. There's even a video where at one point it looks like he's rapping on the phone, whips some seaweed in the air, and then starts praying. I don't know what kind of performance he's trying to pull off in this, but it's starting to make sense why he hasn't booked anything since the Stuck With You video. If we still had the Christian cringe tier, I would definitely be putting it there but I feel like as of now, it probably belongs in Angel Mommy cosplay. He doesn't have the same range as Miss Mommy, let's get that clear, but I feel like for the attempt, he deserves to go there. I had a few people send in David Dobrik and Liza Koshi. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like as a couple, they weren't really that cringe. The breakup video, on the other hand, was weird though, but that isn't really exclusive to them. I find breakup videos in general just very strange. Like the visual of two people in a room who've broken up, facing a camera and weeping at it while they detail said breakup to a bunch of literal strangers on the internet just reads a bit odd to me. Like, just tweet about it if you want. We do not need the Snyder's Cut. This is very weird. Yeah, I feel like ranking-wise, they definitely belong in the not cringe, just strange tier. Kylie and Travis were sent in, specifically for their GQ interview, where he didn't know the name of other dogs and seemed more in love with the peanut butter and jelly sandwich than her. I'll be honest, I feel like these GQ interviews set up every couple that goes on it to come off as ridiculous. Like, if there's anyone we need to blame, it's whoever's coming up with these questions. They make them ask the most common sense shit, but if you get it wrong or forget because it's so common sense, you look like an asshole. Hi everyone, I'm here with my boyfriend for GQ and he's gonna answer a few questions about me. Okay babe, this is an easy one. What's my birthday? Like the day you were born? Yes. I know it ends in like a burr, so like October, November. Are you November. sure that you want this in? We could just skip the question if you want. Shut up. I think we'll put them in that couple in high school though. Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles got sent in a shocking amount of times. I just don't really get why that many people find them cringe. Like, I feel like there's barely any information about them circulating publicly to begin with. I mean, they aren't strange either, but there's nowhere else to really put them here, so I guess we're just gonna have to settle with being strange by association. Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker were sent a shit ton. For the amount that these two were sent in though, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of expecting more. Like the most that I could find was just that they really like PDA and sometimes use terms like sex cleanses. Poosh will never be goop, by the way. Let's get that clear. You cannot out crazy the crazier. Gwyneth is fucking insane. I think my favorite article about their PDA though is this one that just randomly throws in the photos appear to further fuel foot fetish rumors. Like, what do you mean further? Upon further inspection, I'm starting to get where you guys are coming from. Courtney then shockingly revealed to Marta what her doctor seemingly advised. I can't remember if they told us that my thyroid level was low or high, but he said that the thing that would help it would be by drinking Travis's cum four times a week. You couldn't waterboard this information out of me. I'm sorry, you guys were right. Not only is this going in the no words tier, this needs to be sent to the ranch. Next, we have Dax Shepard and Kristen Bell. They were specifically sent in because Kristen Bell decided to pee in a bottle in a car because she doesn't trust public bathrooms. Like not to pee shame here, but the outdoors is an option. You could also just buy an adult diaper. And that option at least gives you a little temporary BBL. I have no idea why they even bothered sharing it in the first place, but I'm definitely putting them in the eye of no words, dear. Bella Thorne and Tena Mojo were sent in. Some of you guys might remember that Bella Thorne dropped that song, Stupid Fucking Bitch, in response to their breakup. And you let me see your tits, but I'm still not over it. Settle. 
You see, she went to the TikTok University of Songwriting. The worst part is I can't even blame her. Like, worst noise has gone viral on there. She did try to start like a TikTok trend with the sound. Tana Mojo ended up responding to it. There were a bunch of subtweets and stuff like that. I'm not gonna get too far into it because honestly, I don't really care. I think it probably belongs in the girls tier and half in the that couple in high school tier. Next we have Suki Waterhouse and Bradley Cooper. Nobody actually sent them in, but I was recently reminded of them on Twitter. Bradley Cooper, 38, reads Lolita to Suki Waterhouse, 21, as she sprawls across him in Parisian Park. I don't think I can explain how uncomfortable this title and photo combo makes me. It is so cursed. Immediately not cringe, but strange, but like deeply, Deeply strange. Megan Trainer and Daryl Sabara are next. I don't love that I had to Google Megan Trainer and Daryl Sabara dildo to jog my memory on this situation, but someone has to do it. This pic of Megan Trainer and the kid from Spy Kids leaving a sex shop with a bag of dildos is truly haunting. I have to admit here, I've been holding on to a question since 2018 when it comes to this photo. How do we know that it's a bag of dildos? Like Cara Delevingne and Ashley Benson left nothing to the imagination. We know it was a sex swing. But this bag though, we really don't know for sure. While I was looking this up again though, I came across a Buzzfeed article that pointed out his shoes in the photo. It kind of makes it look like he's got little fingies for toes. And unfortunately for myself and you, cause I will be putting you through it as well. If you keep scrolling, you get Shailene Woodley wearing them on a red carpet. I don't know why, but this is menacing. For this situation alone though, they're definitely going in the eye of no words tier. A few people actually sent in Benifer, as in Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. I know they were really iconic the first time that they were together, but I'm not gonna lie. This time around, it just kind of feels like he's getting the green dress treatment. Like they've gone as far as recreating the Jenny from the Block music video for paparazzi. It's very weird activity. Surprisingly though, I actually think they belong in Angel Mommy more than anything. Like it or not, this is a performance. Someone specifically sent in Skeet and Kim Kardashian, this man's ability to turn any relationship he's in into cringe is honestly a talent at this point. The my girl is a lawyer tattoo despite his girl not being a lawyer is also a lovely touch. Definitely that couple in high school though. Hailey Bieber and Shawn Mendes were also mentioned a few times, which kind of shocked me. I don't really find them cringe. I honestly forgot they were even together in the first place. So I think more than anything, they belong in the girls tier. Like, there really wasn't any cultural impact there. I think it's safe to say that they'll never grace pop culture the way that Sean and Camila did by getting papped while walking aimlessly in a suburb in pajamas. I miss those days. Timothy Chalamet and Lily Rose Depp got sent in a few times, and I honestly think it's just because of this single photo of them on a boat where it looks like Timothy's dead and Lily's trying to resuscitate him. Which like objectively, I get it. This photo is funny. I can understand why it went viral, but this was like private cringe, you know? Like they weren't tormenting us with this intentionally. And if an account called Shipped took a photo of me making out with someone and memefied it like this, I would set myself on fire. So I'm gonna be a little forgiving on this one. I'm gonna put it in the not cringe but strange tier. Obviously, I don't think it's strange either, but there's nowhere else to put it. All right, this is the final ranking though. As always, it's definitive for me, but it doesn't have to be definitive for you. If there are any changes you would have made, feel free to share them in the comments down below. If you like the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. You can also check out my second channel. I just uploaded a new video on there. We went through all of your guys' unpopular opinions, reacted to them. And you can also check me out on Twitch if you want to watch some live commentary. We're also in the middle of Life is Strange 2. All of my other social media links I'll put in the pinned comment down below. But otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.